Praise Jesus and welcome to today's devotion. You will be blessed. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you because he's here with us. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we honor you this morning. We worship you for who you are. Would you speak to us and use me for as your vessel? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on Monday, we looked at the definition and the examples. On Tuesday, we looked at the danger of, of uh, the religious legalism. And then yesterday, we looked at an example of a church or churches that sank into religious, of churches that found themselves in danger of um, religious legalism. And today, we will look at uh, what Paul is saying to uh, one of those churches. We'll actually, uh, from today all through to Saturday, we will look at what Paul is, um, is, is trying to uh, demystify some of the myths, the myths that um, were there in the church of Galatians, which made them to practice legalism. So Paul is trying, in this passage which we will walk through from today to Saturday, Paul is trying to uh, demystify some of, uh, I mean, those myths that were there. Um, and the issue that made um, the Christians then and the Christians today to find themselves in a place of legalism is where uh, people are trying to find out or ask themselves on how they can be saved. What is expected of them or what does a Christian or a saved person looks like or how can one earn salvation? So that, so the whole thing, the whole uh, thing about legalism is how, you know, points at how one can become uh, saved. Let me tell you, we will be saved or we are saved. We are saved by the grace of God. You know, Romans, Paul writes to Romans in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 9 to 10. And he says that, you know, the one, anyone who um, receives Jesus and, and, uh, and, and accepts him as his Lord and Savior and, and says that, that the Lord is his Lord and Savior, then that person becomes a born again Christian. So let's look at myth number one. Today we'll look at myth number one. Tomorrow we'll look at myth number two. And then on Saturday we will look at myth number three of the things that Paul is trying to demystify um, on, on uh, I mean, on legalistic things that Paul is trying, to, not trying, but that Paul is de demystifying on the matter to do with uh, salvation. So Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, we'll read verse 1 and 2. And this is what it says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your before your very eyes jesus christ was clearly portrayed as crucified i would like to learn i would like to learn just one thing from you did you receive the spirit of observing the law or by believing what you had the G the jews may say we are justified by works. This has been discussed in the previous two chapters. Therefore, the question Paul asks is rhetorical. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you had? So verse 1 and 2, uh, Paul is wondering as he addresses the church of Galatians. Why? Because there was a myth in that, in that church where some, some quarters of Christians taught that one can only be justified by works. So in case you do not understand or uh, you have forgotten what justification is, justification, actually Paul talks about it in the previous chapter of Galatians, that is Ch Galatians chapter 2. So justification is uh, being made righteous. 
So, so there was a myth there. There was a teaching in that, in that church and actually in other churches during that time. And even today, there are many churches that teach that, you know, you can only be justified by works that um, you, have to, you have to keep on, um, you know, being available to serve, you have, which is good because, yes, we have to serve God. You know, there are many who have taught people that you have to give and give and give generously, uh, which is biblical, that you have to uh, love and help the sick and be available for them and be kind to people and, and be uh, forgiving and be so committed, you know, coming to church and praying and serving and uh, dressing in a particular manner and helping so and so. Those are some of the examples of works which is part and parcel of Christianity. But I want you to understand me that, that the reason why that became a myth and the reason why that led to legaliz leg uh, legalism and, then, and so it became a danger in that church was because when people are kind to the poor and they have no relationship with the God of that poor, then their good works of helping the poor becomes work in futile. If people are so committed to church as in their registered members, they never fail to attend services, they, they give generously, they support the poor, they, they are available to visit the, the, the sick in hospitals, you know, they dress well, they relate well with the people. If they do that, which is biblical, but if, I mean, if they do that and they have no relationship with the, with the, with, with them, with the, with the God of the Bible, then that becomes a danger. And so Paul here wants, wants them, you know, he's challenging them uh, by asking them that question. He's wondering uh, what spirit, what, uh, what, what they learned from Jesus Christ, uh, simply because Jesus died and, by the, and in the first century, Jesus, uh, the stories of Jesus' death and resurrection were still fresh in people's mind. But instead of focusing and allowing that Jesus to be their Lord and Savior, they were busy making sure that they are uh, helping the sick and not having a relationship with the Savior who died for them. So here, Paul wants them to know that we will not be made righteous by doing good works. Instead, we will be made righteous by accepting the Lord to be the Lord, to be the one in control, by surrendering totally to God, by allowing Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, by allowing him to be the lead, to be the one leading us, to be the one controlling our hearts, to be the one controlling our, our mind and our heart and our behavior. So we need to uh, allow, learn the word of God and allow that word to change our hearts and then allow our heart to change what we do. Our, uh, to, to change our works. In that, so a combination of work and uh, change of behavior and uh, in terms of allowing God to be the one you are serving and not serving people. Because let me tell you this as I wind the, up this. The danger of, uh, the danger of uh, making, of, of working and working and doing good works is that you then please, you, you then do that to please the community to please people instead of pleasing God. So God has to be the center because he's, our, he's the God of the works. He's the God of those people. He's our God. And so he has to be the one who is being glorified in all this. And so may the Lord help us to submit fully to him. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we worship you because... You never fail. You are a faithful God. And when, you, when Jesus, you were departing, when you were departing from this world, you promised that you will send your Holy Spirit who will be our teacher. 
how we pray for Holy Spirit to teach us and guide your people and uh, continue to give us wisdom to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and scatter every darkness from before your path. And the blessings of God, Almighty Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.